Taurus, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will go from the 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing to the channel. It means a lot. Please continue to do so. All links are below if you want to get personal readings, dating advice, whatever. All links are below. Let's get into it. All right, so how Taurus comes into the week is the justice card all right okay and your advice here is the seven of earth the outcome here is the ace of air okay so this looks like someone wants to apologize there might be some advising or advising about what happened someone is trying to right the wrongs by way of communication this could be you towards someone is really or has or someone has analyzed the relationship the advice here for you is to know that there's a temporary standstill in a significant marriage relationship business partnership what you do need to do is share. You cannot can hold on to how you feel or what you would like to happen or your particular take on a relationship, situationship, whatever it may be. You need to be the ace of sword uh, so that you can push forward. You can have this new beginning with this person. Do know that in this relationship, in this dynamic, is more to what you think it is someone is holding back this could be you this could be the other person this person is not letting in or letting in or they're not letting in they're not letting you on to how they feel and what they're thinking there is secret secret plan or secret doings there could be someone doing something behind your back or you there's more of that to this than meets the eye your plans need revision because you got you got advised of some of you this is tangible this is in in regards to doing business the business of buying a car selling a car buying a home selling a home you know something where there's a significant purchase where there are other people involved too it's like you're trying to do the best for the greater good but your plans need revision with the seven of swords here at the bottom of the deck and you're waiting for the good news and it says that you will get it there will be victory but this is this is a challenging new beginning because you had to you had to institute some type of measure here whether it was saving or going to the next level you had to cut something out cut someone off um, this could be a person this could be more so uh, in regards to your resources intangible things but you thought that something was moving forward but then there was there was up you needed to revise this okay so we have the devil here with the seven of swords so you you want to make sure you make the best choice do not be extravagant in in your decision or choice making you have an active choice here uh this looks like someone had to get together in regards to their their money their finances their credit worthiness um, someone's trying to get back on track back in control we have two sevens here you may have gone to get some legal advice gone to court or something like that you got advice um, you repayment of debt you may have had to repay some debts in order to decrease you know the debt to income ratio whatever this may be you may have had to sacrifice uh, what it is, you know, a, a bit of luxury, 
scale back. I'm hearing scale back on a concert, scale back. I don't know. Scale, you just had to scale it back. You needed to revise the plan in order to get in control of this ship. Because the ship, if you just let it continue to go how it was, it was going to be sinking or you were not going to reach a significant goal here. Now, if this is relationship, um, someone may want to apologize in regards to a relationship. You could be dealing with a Capricorn person, a Libra. Someone wa wants to or has apologized. Do know in dealing with this person, there's still an element of something being hidden. Let's see what the shells have to say. Mom, your mom, you might want, you might, your mom might be significant or someone's mother is significant. You may be wanting to make decisions for the greater good. Your family, thoughts, yeah, your thoughts surrounding this situation and marriage. Okay. So, this looks like financial issues, trying to work them out within a dynamic of marriage, a committed relationship, a home. Some of you are trying to secure a home, home loans, something of that nature. Uh, just really trying to get more balance here. And you may have been advised in order how to, of how to get back in control. Some of you are, see, if you were married, you have more finances or someone is posing marriage to you. Now, I'm not saying proposing, but this could be a family member or someone like that. They're saying something like, why aren't you married? Your mother could be saying that. An interest, interesting week, Taurus. It looks like um, rather quiet. You kind of put yourself in a place of just trying to regain control. Maybe things were had gotten out of control, either in the relationship, the marriage. Um, you guys weren't sharing, but now you may come into the element of sharing. There might have been a codependency. There might have been addiction. Um, there could have been just um, unequally yoked. There was someone giving more to a situation. There was someone just receiving. Okay, so some of you feel like a mother is toxic or being toxic in regards to mothering or smothering here. Go over to the website, book your own reading there. Stay tuned for the um, the real with Al, the, the, the real corner. I don't know what I'm going to name it, but anyway, stay tuned for that. If you want to book a personal reading, all links are below, uh, whether it's about your life or maybe your dating life. If you want some dating advice, go ahead and book a reading there. Take care, guys. All links are below. Use the coupon codes below also. Take care. Happy holidays. Hello, everyone. So today on Al's Real Corner. All right. So today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men. You can pertain this to women too, but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos, uh, subscribing to the channel than men. So I apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex, just apply it to your life, right? Okay. All right. So. Emotionally unavailable men, women, cat, dog, whatever, are basically non-committal. Okay, Those, these are non-committal people. These are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you, uh, with anything or with anybody. It, it might spill over into every facet of their life. We're talking about more so relationships, romantic relationships. Um, so that's, that's what we have here. Not, they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people. They could be married, uh, in love with another, 
or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit, um, and which hence they are emotional, emotionally unavailable. So when we look at, when we dissect this, this term here, we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable. The mind wants to rationalize that that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that no 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because you know they tell me how much they like me they compliment me they touch me we have sex blah 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 so you rationalize and you say they're not emotionally unavailable they are whatever you want to deem them as but emotionally unavailable what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is it's a relationship it's i put in and then i'm going to receive out it is um it is equal in a sense suppo supposedly you know um it is a relationship. It, it could be if, an if-then relationship. If I do this, then I'll get this. This type of person, the emotionally unavailable person, is not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me well let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are they're complementary they're seductive you know so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look well that is a key factor of an unavailable un emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything, okay? Because they are void of, they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason, we've got some reasons here, it could be more, uh, to invest emotionally, okay? So you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or, uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move that's complimentary that they, they are that they will compliment you they will um, put themselves on the line for you know for those purposes so let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are evasive seductive complimentary rigid and routine key point right here rigid in their routine they will not allow you or pretty much anyone but definitely you because we're only talking about you and this other person right they will not allow you to dictate uh interfere with mess up a routine so if they tell you that we're meeting on monday at 6 p.m at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh, 7 p.m. No. This is what I want. I want it here. Now, that time, if you can't do it, then okay. I'm okay with not seeing you. I'm okay with us not getting together. But it has to be on my term, my terms, my routine. And their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days, they are either dating, married, in love with another or there's significant, there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they, they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take willing to allow you to take the ring sometime no they're not into that there's no um investment here they're unavailable completely okay so 
this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life, no real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah, uh, contentment. Yeah, in this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more and more and more, better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are what you want and then you can start to ask the answer some of these questions like what is my end game right okay so anyway moving right along you say um i said what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something um you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving or maybe they don't even know how to give right so you're trying to get water from the rock okay granted it can happen it can happen but i do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation an emotionally unavailable person this is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just It's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment, and you tell the person, and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time, and you've come along and asked me for a commitment, and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. B, here's the tarot for you. The page of swords. Be inquisitive, be curious, be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person. Learn your person. This is if you want commitment. Learn this person so you know what you're dealing with. You know who you're dealing with. The most, I say this every single time, or I ask the question, every time I, I do a reading, a personal reading, the the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this, and how do they feel about this, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth, expecting, uh, the asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years. Well, we know that that is not the truth. You, We both go on about our lives. You find out that 
I've only been doing YouTube videos for two years, uh, well, three years, and then you say, you come back to me, you say, well, I, I asked you the question, how long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond, or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I ha you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. Because now when you find out, you, you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along, you want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So you you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman, will probably, most likely, elude or or move toward toward evasiveness. You start asking questions. It's no more surface level. You're trying to go deep. You know. Um, you may say, "Well, I only see you on Wednesday and Friday. What are you doing? You know, the other days of the week, or I know you see you work, blah blah blah." But um, maybe we can get together on one of those other days. If they start to be evasive, then you know what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too. Anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the Seven of Swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games, they give you just a little bit, or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to, to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavail you know emotionally unavailable person all right because they become the seven of swords now at this point you can deal with this shit i wouldn't um if you want to continue to deal with this state your claim be the ace of swords stating your claim is I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom. Outside of doing something like going to dinner or um, drinks. I just I want to really spend more time with you, around you. Because I would like to get to know you, alright? They're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid, the rigidness of their routine, right? So, um, in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be, this is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say... If I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less. Or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling being seductive complimenting you uh you know showing you a good time 
They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim, and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but but do understand that good news and, and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just, you're just waiting and you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You stated your claim. You've created the boundaries and now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They, they still come back around being evasive, seductive, you know, the same old thing that you might need to, um, this is why the, I put the world here. You, now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? you. Some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is, the that is hence, that's the operative word. It can be done. You're going to have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson. Walk away. A person can institute these types of this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own and there's no trauma um there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with when you're hurt you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation but when you are whole you're you're healed you you see the lesson in this and you're and you can walk away be able to walk away um, emotionally, um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you, if the result is this person is coming back and being the same and some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and, um, giving you exactly what you want still the world now you're going to the next chapter because you now know how to deal with with situations you can readily identify also with me writing the tarot um the significance of the tarot in here is of course this is a tarot channel is to bring in the tarot but it's also uh if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business, or family, or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy and you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know them. You do need to do the investigative work. The page of swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the king of swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So 
We have all these sevens here. Seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing. It talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for, for anybody. Um, share this video, okay? Thank you, guys. Take care, guys.